On today's download, we'll kick off a new series on building brand visual libraries, talk about the challenges of managing multiple brands, and show you some solutions that make it easier to access, manage, and share your brand assets. The download presented by Getty Images starts now. Welcome to the download presented by Getty Images. I'm your host, Jennifer Kelly. Thank you so much for joining us. As always, I want to give a special shout out to all of our premium access subscribers around the world watching today. And thank you for your business. We truly appreciate it. Building a visual library is an important part of how your brand is seen by consumers and how they think and feel about it. And whether you're creating a brand from scratch or evolving and maintaining an existing one, there are any number of challenges you're going to face. This episode, we kick off our series on building a brand visual library by taking a look at the challenges of managing assets for multiple brands. Joining us today is Madison Leskinen, who manages brand design and development at Teladoc Health, the world's largest virtual whole person care provider. Thank you for taking the time to join us on the download today, Madison. Thanks so much, Jennifer. I'm excited to be here for today's episode so we can dive deeper into some obstacles that a lot of creative teams can face when working with multiple brands. These are going to be challenges that I've experienced firsthand over the course of my eight-year career in brand design and development, where I've been lucky enough to manage nine identities across two large companies in the healthcare industry. But I promise you, with these challenges, I have found some great solutions, especially because of our partners here at Getty Images that we'll be sure to cover in the second half of our show. Now, the first challenge I want to go over is that thousand foot or big picture view that really showcases the significance and importance of brand asset management, which the other challenges we'll discuss roll up into. A surefire way to weaken your brand's credibility is to be inconsistent, which as you can imagine, can become a lot easier when you are managing these multiple brands. And I really want this to resonate. So let me break it down to brand identity versus brand image. You own your brand identity. It's what you choose to say and show up as for your brand in the market. Think of this as your messaging, product, customer service, tactics, and really your visual design system. Now your brand image is not in your control because it's what consumers hear and interpret about your brand. It's their perception and reaction to your brand identity. This is why I think your ultimate priority in brand management, especially brand asset management, should be to create and maintain consistency. It's that foundation for trust, remembrance, and familiarity with consumers. And I think a great way to help achieve that consistency is going to be through planning and building a brand library as a single source of truth across your organization. Now, when you go to build this brand library, there are going to be logistics you have to think through that wouldn't apply if you were dealing with just one brand. The most pivotal process to really nail down here is how will you ensure brand assets such as logos, color palettes, icons, and photography are used for their intended brand. It may not seem important, but think about it this way. Each brand is unique in how it serves your market and consumers. From the strategy to the personality, it's going to be how you protect the integrity and distinctiveness of each brand, how they stand apart from competitors, and how your consumers know it's brand A and not brand B. The next thing to consider is how will you share out all of your approved brand assets? Here you'll need to account for different internal teams like marketing, communications, and HR. But if you're a large organization, I bet you work with many external partners like agencies, freelancers, contracts, and even vendors. The assets that everyone can access need to be the same across the board. Remember, your brand library is meant to be that single source of truth. That way, when your agency is developing your next TV spot, your freelance designer is creating a direct mail piece, or your sales team is putting together a product pitch, everything in that brand experience wraps up into one cohesive identity. 
As we all know well, the only constant in life is change. So these great on-brand assets that you have today may not be the same assets you need six months, one year, or even five years from now. Do you have an outdated logo? Are you launching a new campaign next month? Or thinking about changing your preferred photography characteristics? Or maybe you're even merging some of these brands. You'll have to establish checks and balances to update and audit the assets in your library. This will help prevent a logo from three years ago with that old tagline from being used on any new tactics. I'm sure it's happened to most of us, myself included, but it doesn't have to. And to bring home our challenges, I want to be transparent here and say that building a brand library is going to take time and require diligence to keep it all in check but I promise the hard work will pay off. It can be even easier if you research and invest in the best asset management tool that supports your needs. Things to look for are clean interfaces, easy to navigate user experience, different platform features, and really ways that you can automate the process to work smarter, not harder. Because when your assets are readily available in an organized brand library, you are ultimately freeing up your time to focus on fostering these successful and remarkable different brands. And that should feel so empowering. And I hope that by sharing these five challenges I've navigated through give you valuable questions to consider so you can have a steadier plan when you go to build your very own brand library. Thank you so much for those tips, Madison. And we do have a lot of healthcare clients here at Getty Images. So I'm wondering if you can speak a little bit uh, to the unique challenges that you encounter within the healthcare industry. Yeah, absolutely. That's a great question. So the healthcare industry is filled with a lot of different regulations and nuances that I think require you and your team to be very detail oriented. Particularly in the US, there are strict rules and guidelines set for government funded programs like Medicare and Medicaid. So on the creative side, there's minimum font sizes that you can even use and hefty disclaimers that have to be factored into the design. Then on the marketing and product side, there are ways you can and cannot reach out to consumers for things like acquisition and retention, and even strict timelines for when you can mention specific plan benefits and pricing. So it's complex, and I think that might even be a little bit of an understatement. But this is why I encourage regulated industries to have an asset management tool in place, especially ones that can help schedule asset availabilities, store correct logo files, and manage asset and user permissions. It can save you from a lot of headaches. Perfect. Thank you so much for those bonus tips, and we'll see you again in a few moments. As an added note, all of the beautiful videos you saw throughout Madison's presentation and millions more high quality video clips are available exclusively on GettyImages.com. If you'd like to know how you can add video to an existing or new premium access plan, please reach out to your Getty Images representative and we will be happy to help. We'll be right back after this. What could happen if I use an image or content without a license? What permissions do I need for music? What if I want to use an image with a famous person in it? And we actually have a global RNC team that can help you sort through those layers and help secure the permissions you need so that you're free to focus on your uh, creative vision. So it's important to understand your position when using something you've not created yourself in case there are rights involved that need to be cleared. The takeaway, do not right click everyone. Welcome back. We're now also joined by Senior Technical Account Manager Olga Cisneros. Welcome to the download, Olga. I understand that you have some solutions to share with us today, so I'll let you get right into it. Thank you, Jennifer, for the intro, and thank you to Madison for taking the time to talk through some of the challenges in building a brand library. Today, we're going to talk about a Getty Images product that our viewers may not know about called Media Manager, powered by Brandfilter. Media Manager is a digital asset management system, or DAM, and is used by brands all over the world to tackle some of the exact challenges Madison was just describing. It is an incredibly powerful addition to any premium access plan, and I'm happy to show you how it works. One challenge you mentioned, Madison, was ensuring assets are used for the correct brand is necessary when working with different entities. This is especially important for regulated industries such as healthcare, finance, education, and technology. So I'm going to share my screen and show you how Media Manager solves for that. Let's take a look and see a brand library in action. 
What we're looking at here is the make-believe health and wellness technology company. We are at the library level. With Media Manager, you have multiple libraries, but in this scenario, this is where all of our content resides for all of my brands. Scrolling down and looking through this, you can see content kind of differs. Um, there is workout images, some nutrition assets, some healthcare related assets. How do we solve for identifying the right content when we manage multiple brands? In this case, we're gonna solve for that by segmenting. We segment either by audience or by brands by using collections. In our example, we have one collection for each of our brands. There is a from within app that is all about nutrition. There's a self care app, which is all about healthcare. And there's a sweated out app, which is all about body movement and working out. Looking at the sweated out brand collection, its name is clearly displayed. There is a header with someone running by the ocean. We have our brand assets in here. These are the assets that are going to be used for this specific brand. We have our logos and icons and graphics that are related to body movement. There are videos in here and also brand colors. This self-care app is all about taking care of yourself medically. There are doctor visits and supplement imagery. There is tracking your healthy habits, you know, via an app, hopefully our app. Um, and the logos and icons are all relative to healthcare. There is absolutely no question which brand we are in. Thanks, Olga. I, I could definitely use a self-care app myself. That sounds great to me. Uh, Madison, as a brand library manager, what do you do to ensure that users know what brand they, they are in? Yeah, so outside of collections, I always have used the custom field options for adding my own data to every asset in the library. And the reason why I do this is so I have an additional location to kind of gut check on the brand. That way, if an asset ever gets to the wrong collection or there's confusion on what brand it's purchased for, there's really that backup location to help confirm what brand it's intended for. So there's really no questions about it. Good stuff there, Madison. Olga, can you show us how this works? Good question, Jen. What drives all of this is metadata. You can manually add content to where it needs to be published to, but what's really neat with Media Manager is if you supply some data points, the system kind of works in your favor. In this case, we if we look at one of the assets here and we scroll down and look at some of those data points, we can tell that this is a friend self-care brand. Now let's take a look at the from within collection. Metadata is key when it comes to segmenting your brands. And in this case, from, from within, I can even take it a step further with metadata um, and I can look at recipes, meal prepping, and eating. The metadata is what drives the content to go into the collections based on the brand and it allows people to search for specific content within that brand. And you know that how that saying goes, quality in, quality out. So the more metadata that you provide, the better the search results will be for those end users. Madison, what has been your experience in using collections? Yeah, so I'm not kidding when I say collections have really been my lifesaver. It's such an easy step to implement at any point in the brand library process. I've had them set up at the launch of a brand library or I've added them into the structure afterwards. So it's a really flexible tool. And I just love that you can toss in some brand identity flair with those favicons and header images. I mean, who doesn't love flair? Um, but as I just mentioned, Madison, it's really easy to uh, create new brands. So if your company acquired another brand, you just you know, create a new, new collection and you're set. And Olga, what are some of the other challenges? Another challenge I've heard you mention, Madison, is asset distribution. Media Manager is a web-based platform, which means all users need is an internet connection and sign-in information. Manage users within each brand while also sharing content to a third party for one-off projects. When managing brands, multiple brands, a brand library, it's important to consider user access and accessibility in terms of getting your brand content out there. When it comes to this, you can either democratize content and give users access to everything, with brands separated by collections, or you can specifically add users to one or all of the brands. In the case for From Within, we can add internal users and external users. 
the user management experience is fairly efficient, accurate, and secure. And it allows for certain users to see certain things. This is great for third parties, those users who are not within your company, such as agencies, freelancers, among other entities that need access to your content. You can grant them access specifically to a collection. And in this case, we're in From Within, but if we need to grant them access to additional collections, they can toggle between as we've seen in the previous example. Great, and, and Madison, do you ever work with a partner on a project where you don't need to grant them login access? Yes, definitely. So I've shared logos with co-branding partners or even TV stations for sponsorships. It comes in handy when you need a freelancer to help out with one or two ad hoc projects when the team's really busy. Is there an easy way to deal with this kind of challenge? Absolutely. Media Manager offers a quick and easy way to, to share files. All you need to do is select your files. I'm going to select some files here. Um, and I'm going to create what is called a public link. So this makes it so anyone with this link can access this content. We can receive certain parameters, such as require an email address to access. You can expire it out if you'd like. And once we open this link in a new tab, this is what the end user will see, separated by the sections there. And on the bottom right, you'll also get your own little dashboard to check activity. As I mentioned, this is a great tool for sharing content with external partners, or even internally. For instance, if you're thinking of using these assets for a specific campaign, you can select these files and shoot off a share link to your creative director, uh, and they can get select one or all of the files and use them for the project you're working on. You know, Olga, you just reminded me of what life was like before a media manager, when I had to manage brand assets on an internal site and then share them out externally through things like flash drives and FTPs. I do not miss those days. And I think it's great that when you have this one asset management tool, you're really only supporting that idea that all teams are designing and creating for that one cohesive brand experience. Great, I'm gonna jump in here. Madison, you mentioned a challenge about being able to audit. Olga, can you speak to that a little bit and is there a solution to this? Yes, in managing a brand library, it's important for users to know and access what is on brand. Media Manager facilitates this process, saving you time. The first auditing feature I wanna share with you is asset availability. Picture this. You're working on a campaign that is going live at a future date and you have the final assets on hand. Uh, you can easily upload your content now and set it to be available or to push out in the future at launch date. So I'm selecting my files here and we're going to publish it out January 1st. And once I hit save off January 1st, um, you will see that the asset is now in a draft form. So what will happen is on the first, these assets will be pushed out automatically depending on what time zone I selected. So you don't have to worry about going back and publishing it out. You can complete your tagging and all of the work beforehand to push that content out. And when the date comes, you don't have to worry about it knowing that the system does the job for you. Just the same, if you want to expire content out, you can set an expiration date for the future. If I want to expire this asset out a year from now and set it to expire December 1st, 2023, what it does is it shows users and it's very clear that this will expire out December 1st, it's right there under the thumbnail. So what happens on that date? At that time, a red banner will come across the thumbnail and display expired. Anything with a red banner is pulled from end user view and users cannot see it even if it's already published out to a collection, even if it's in a share link or any of those other elements, it will not show up for end users at all. So what's happening here is you're saving time that you no longer have to go back and do all of that work. Thanks, Olga. And Madison, how has that asset availability function eased your workflow? It's given me peace of mind when I need to turn on or expire assets for a very specific date. The fact that I'm able to do that the day of I learn about it and not have to schedule a reminder on my calendar, I'm sure it saved me from a lot of mistakes. That's for sure. What other features are there, Olga? We have a few other features such as approve. If we're doing an audit of our content, um, 
and these soups here are not on no longer relevant and not on brand and i want to pull them i can just select the files and click on the thumbs down unapproved so now these show up as pending these will allow me to see what content i've pulled and what is considered no longer relevant to my brand this keeps me from having to delete the files in case I change my mind, in case there's a brand initiative change, um, but it pulls it from end user view. I think these features are especially useful when you launch or end a campaign or experience a rebrand because you can set those outdated assets to expire, but that doesn't mean you lose those assets or have to store them somewhere else because your media manager admins who typically own this process can still view them or keep them safe while you make this transition. And Olga, can you tell us uh, some of the ways that Media Manager can help improve efficiency? Yes, absolutely. Media Manager offers several tools that work behind the scenes to make this happen. Integration between Getty Images and Media Manager is very seamless. If you have a licensing agreement with Getty Images or if you're a custom content client, it's relatively easy to move that content from GettyImages.com onto Media Manager. I want to show you this in real time. I'm going to run a search for outdoor yoga on Getty Images, and I'm going to select a file. I'm going to grab this image here. Um, before I hit download, I have the option of putting in a note or a job code, uh, a project code, anything that is relevant that you might want to document for this file. Now I'm going to hit on download. Um, now, when I go back to my library, after refreshing the page, we'll see that the file automatically landed on my down. Wow. And, and Madison, I know that download notes can be very important to clients, but they use them in different ways. Can you tell us a little bit about how you utilize download notes in your specific workflow? Yes, I love download notes. It's a required step that I've put in place to help eliminate any confusion where there are multiple people buying assets from Getty Images. They just have to put in what brand they're purchasing the new asset for in the download notes. That way, when the media, ad media manager admin like myself goes to assign the asset to a collection, we don't have to guess or reach out to them every time. It really just streamlines the process for everyone. Great tip, Madison. And Olga, are there any other tools that Media Manager has in the background that can help facilitate workflows? Yes, um, I wanna share with you automations as well, which is a rule that is, if X has a value, then Y happens. If we look at the usage tab here, we have an indicator of where the asset is. We have it in the brand creative section of my library. Um, so since we just downloaded this file, it hasn't been assigned a brand. So let's do that in real time. I'm going to edit my file and I'm going to opt for selecting the brand, sweat it out. Once I hit save and we go back to that usage tab, now we see that it is also in the collection sweat it out app. So I'm going to close this out and show that to you in my sweat it out collection. And now we'll see that that new file that I just downloaded is part of my brand. And I can't stress this enough. As I mentioned previously, taxonomy is key and really moves content to where it needs to go. If we scroll down on this, in addition to you know, the brand that I just put this under, um, we have all of the information that comes embedded with Getty. So it's all of the keywords anything about the license, who licensed it, when they licensed it, and especially those download notes that Madison mentioned, which are really important when it comes to auditing purposes as well. In addition to this, there are a lot of tools on the back end that can facilitate a lot of processes. These tools keep you from having to do this yourself. In addition to the Getty integrations, there are also plugins that you can use that are straight out of the box. For instance, there's an Adobe plugin, Canva plugin, there's a Slack plugin and any other tools that may, you may use, tools or platforms that you may use. The integrations that are available that can facilitate a lot of your workflow so you don't have to really download the files locally and then upload them to another platform to work on those files or vice versa. In the end, the goal of having a brand library is to make brand assets readily available to users. With Media Manager, the system works for you and you can set your focus on growing your brand's presence.
Thanks, Olga. That's all super helpful information that I think our clients will also find useful. Madison, as a user yourself, do you have any final tips for us? Yeah, I just wanted to close out by saying that I will always recommend that integration between Getty Images and Media Manager and being able to set up those different triggered automations because it really eliminates a lot of the manual process. So you almost forget it's even happening and just how much time it's saving you on a day-to-day -day basis. Media Manager has been such a great tool for me and my team. Yeah, clients love Media Manager because it gives designers the freedom to design instead of keeping track of reports and expiration dates and, and that sort of thing. So thank you both for, for showing us the ins and outs of it. With that, we've come to the end of today's program. Special thanks again to our guests, Madison and Olga. Thank you both for being here. Don't forget to check out all of our past episodes, including Premium Access Live over on the Getty Images events page and watch them anytime on demand. If you have questions about your Premium Access plan, visit gettyimages.com or contact your Getty Images representative. They'll be happy to connect with you. Thanks again for joining us today. I've been your host, Jennifer Kelly, and we'll see you next time on The Download.